Now this year we may be back in the red a little bit, maybe back in the black. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I assure you, it matters. Now in 4K. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where I talk and do everything pinball. So if that sounds interesting to you, then join the over 10,000 that have hit the button before you. So first on the list here is Stern Pinball with their release of the Uncanny X-Men last week. And on my stream that I did that night of the release, a lot of you were there. I mean, I think that was actually my biggest audience so far on a stream. Thanks to those of you that joined, especially even more thank you to those that contributed to like super uh, chats and stuff like that. It was a great moment for all of us to be excited again about a game release. I mean, there's obviously every game that gets released, there's a little bit of excitement among the few because of the theme and stuff like that. But I think that this particular release did a little more than that. It, it reached out to, even though people didn't like the theme, they still looked at the design and went, could be fun, or it's different. I mean, and the thing is, different could be a good thing, different could be a bad thing. And, and that's what's funny about this, is that it's a common thing that I do if in, in life. Let's just say, for instance, you get into a car accident. I mean, I got out of my car, and I was like, well, that's different. But... The thing is, and why we're excited about this being different, is because for such a long time, we've had the traditional machine with the Italian bottom. And a lot of you out there don't know what that means when I say Italian bottom. I'm not talking about butts or anything like that. It's the bottom third of a play field. The typical layout where your flipper bats are at and your in lanes and your out lanes kind of thing. And this game has changed that. Now, it's not the first time to do this. A lot of you already know this. There's games from the past that Jack Danger obviously took liberties from here and there to put this whole package together for us. We've got a little bit of Gold Wings or Spy Hunter, uh, Freddy Krueger with a hand that moves you know, the ball off the track. It's kind of a little bit of a nod to that. And, or Johnny Mnemonic with a hand and stuff. We're getting little hints of other games from the past that we kind of go, oh, a little bit of a, a moment there, a little bit of a nugget from that game, a little bit of a nugget from that game. It's, it's impossible to create a game this day, today, that has no correlation to a particular point in another game. It's just impossible. It can't be done. So I think what he's done, though, has, like I said, nugget here, nugget there from these games, and put something together that is a breath of fresh air. And the thing is now, where we're at is that we're excited about it. We're looking forward to seeing it shoot more than anything else. And that's what we're waiting on right now. And what the rumors are starting to speculate is that the reason we haven't seen a gameplay stream yet or even an announcement of a gameplay stream is because the game is not ready. Code-wise, it seems that more than likely they, like I said, speculation, that they released this game as quickly as they did to get in front of what they knew JJP was going to be doing or any other pinball manufacturer for that point. They wanted to get this game out sooner than later. And more than likely, this code is probably right there in the high point seven to possibly low point eight. That's my guesstimation at this point in time of where the code's currently at. If it's better than that, sweet. But it's not the first time that they've released a game, shown it off, and then not mentioned or said anything about a stream. It's, it's, we've, we've had releases before, guys, where we haven't had an, like an immediate date for a gameplay stream. I, I don't know why that certain people are starting to pile on of, where's my gameplay stream at? Where's my gameplay stream at? It's coming. But, but the thing is, either the code's not ready, or possibly... There could be licensing issues when it comes to getting approvals on what they can show on the screen with video assets. So, either way you look at it though, if it's a licensing holding up, or if the code's not done, in the end, the game isn't ready to show us. Now, I'm talking about this game a lot in this episode, guys, because honestly, this game reached inside, and it pulled out something I do not like about me. And evidently, I have a little bit of FOMO, and I'm not happy about that. I was so close to pulling the trigger on this game before playing it. And this is one of those things that I, I harp on 
the most about myself is that I don't want to buy something unless I play it first. And it still holds true. Don't, don't get me wrong, guys. Don't, don't start thinking that I've already bought the game. No, I have not bought the game. Do I want the game? Yes. I want to see how it shoots first off, but I also want to play it. And this is not a game that I'm just not going to be able to obtain, guys. This is going to be made for a long time. It's already selling relatively well from what little notes I've gotten from distros. It's doing better than the previous couple of games from Stern. So, as close as I was to possibly going even for an LE, it's like all I did was basically step back and I just waited. I was like... Uh, and it, it was almost like a post-nut clarity. As Webster Merriam defines it as... Mike, I know what post-nut clarity is. Oh, thank God. I thought I was going to have to explain it to you, no. and then I look like the bad guy, and then I'm like villainized. You're telling me to leave. I think you should stay. The post-nut clarity says, get out, sister. You are not welcome. You know, just hold back. If I want to get a premium, I can get one. They're not going to be unobtainable or anything, guys. And I can hold off for another month and play it at Expo just to be really sure that the game is going to be something that I would like to own. And my local arcade is getting a pro, evidently, so I'll be able to little hop and a skip jump down the street and be able to enjoy it that way as well. But like me and most of you out there, if you want a new game, not necessarily the Uncanny X-Men, but any new game, our game rooms are getting pretty full. So the chances are people are putting the games that they're willing to sacrifice out on the market so they can put the new in. This is the common thing about pinball and thus in the industry for as long as we've been in here is that our game rooms are full for a lot of us. Unless you're William, you know who you are, who's building an extra building to incorporate another 40 games. So, all right. But like a lot of us have only a limited amount of space. And what you see behind me is not my entire collection. I've got three other games in my house that don't need to be in that particular room. I don't want them to be in there, but that's just where they're at at this point in time. But it's the same for me. I am going to be getting rid of a game or possibly two to get X-Men Premium if things go according to plan. And I plan on this game being highly enjoyable for me. But we shall see. Spent a lot of time on that, but I think we're going to spend just a little bit more on pointing out something that I literally just saw. And for those of you that would like to see how X-Men shoots, what if I told you you could? You could right now get an idea of how X-Men shoots. I will put a link in the video description down below. This individual has created this particular software and he has replicated to the best of, it, of the current abilities the X-Men, uh, the Uncanny X-Men game. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be a one-to-one -one perfection of how the game shoots. I mean, this is literally putting things on top of images that are stretched out to get it somewhat close, and whereas an actual designer in creating these, they got to get things down to the millimeter. So, this just would give you an idea. But overall, the software looks amazing. I think this is something that a lot of you that want to tinker around with pinball design could get into so by all means link in the video description down below to check this software out next up is jersey jack pinball so we've gotten leaks leaks over the past couple of weeks and this is funny is that you see people like oh from an anonymous source no you don't get leaks with images of this quality from anonymous sources it's just a source that would like to remain anonymous but yeah so it, and, and my first indicator that I knew that it wasn't an anonymous source is when Nap Arcade posted that, that it was from an anonymous source. No, because Nap has received plenty of other pictures and information in regards to manufacturers and what they're doing, and he doesn't share them out of respect for them. So, for him to share an image and go, I received this from an anonymous source, and here you go, I was like, A bullshit! A bullshit! A bullshit! Bullshit. Now, obviously, when the images get out on the interweb and pen side and stuff like that, then Nap's like, well, it's out in the public. It is what it is. So let me do a write-up publication on this. But for him to be the initial release of a leaked image from an anonymous source, I was like, hmm, not, 
I'm not falling for that one. So along with these leaked images of Avatar, we also have what is going to be a media gathering to show off Avatar to select individuals in the hobby. This is kind of like what Stern did with the John Wick release, only now JJP's doing it with their Avatar. So they're selecting uh, hand-picked individuals throughout the hobby or the industry to bring them into the facility on the... Is it this Friday coming up? I think that's the 13th. Because the initial release is on the 12th. So they're bringing them in on 13th for them to get early access and to play this game. So I'm sure we'll get write-ups from a lot of different individuals. I don't have like a list, like an attendance sheet of who all is going to be attending this and everything. I do know that Kaneda is going to be there. I think the Kineticist is also going to be there. I'm assuming that Jason Knapp will be there. He should be there. Just saying. But um, um, other people, I just don't know who all is going to be there at this point in time. But I know some people ask if I was going to be there. No, I will not be there. So as far as like the Avatar game and what we're seeing and stuff like that, how do I feel or what do I think about what's going on? This is going to be a, an interesting like battle between these two uh, companies, JJP and Stern, for their releases to be so close together. I, I think that... What we're seeing so far with Avatar, it looks like we're going to be getting hints and things that are not commonly seen in pinball as well. So I'm sure we'll probably still have the Italian bottom, but as far as like underneath the play field and stuff like that, it looks like we're getting hints of things that just haven't been done before. And we know that they're going to pack the game with all sorts of like, you know, types of you know scopes and stuff we've already got a hint of a floating island and stuff like that so uh, with uh, what the hints we're getting is also from rumors is that there's like six flippers and so it's going to be a different game more than likely it's going to be a beautiful game but as of right now i just don't have any kind of excitement or interest in it mainly by, because of the theme i guess i mean we'll see how that changes so as i put out these polls during my live streams and on my community page for YouTube, I'm also kind of like curious to see how I weeble and wobble between the Uncanny X-Men and the Avatar game. Because I, at this point in time, I'm gung-ho about X-Men, and I'm just kind of like, eh, it's, it's Avatar, but we'll see where it goes. Uh, American Pinball. Okay, so look, they're not going to be releasing or revealing their game before Expo. Now, there was an interview that he did while he was in the UK. I will put a link for this interview in the description down below if you'd like to watch it in its entirety. He goes over a lot of different things. And from what little hints that I got throughout this, Cuphead is definitely going to be their next game. Uh, that If you pay attention to what he's talking about licensing and how art can be a factor in that and how they can be picky and choosy and he points about a glove being not at the correct height and stuff like that so it sounds like their art team or whoever's doing the art for a cuphead probably had you know conflicting i guess ideas between them and the uh, license holder on that so that's speculation on that but he talks about a number of different things, and uh, I guess, you know, obviously I'm just going to do a little key speaking about certain things. So one, look, I get I get it that the barbecue game was an homage to Barry Owsler, and this was all for him. This is, you know, and I, I understand your feelings of why you created this game. I understand that. The thing is, you created it. And you have all these feelings and everything towards Barry, and that's awesome. Whereas, the thing is, you're catering this game for the masses. And I don't how, know how you can translate, correlate all these thoughts and feelings to the masses. I guarantee you, 90% of the people that are going to walk up to this game anywhere are not going to know who Barry is. They don't know, and more than likely, will not care. So I'm I'm happy for you, people out there at American Pinball have created this game and you're happy with it and you love it. But it, it seems like you're putting a lot of weight on Barry's name and who he is in order to sell this game when no one knows, at least on the general amount of people in the pinball hobby. I, I, even a lot of us in the pinball hobby probably don't know who Barry Owsler is. Those of us deep in with it and know pinball designers, and know their history, yeah, we're going to know it. 
But then we see what the game has in it, and we're also kind of like, yeah, I, 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 okay, it's a, it's a pinball game that exists, but I think there could be more in it. I would like to see more in it, and if you're not going to put more in it, then I think the price should kind of like, you know, reflect that. But when talking about price, this was a funny segment that I saw in that interview where he talks about it. And you know what? I'm just going to play it for you right here. And as a parent company, it's like, Dad, I need money to do this. <laughs> now, granted, he sees the value. He sees that. He's supporting us. But he wants us to grow. He wants us to stand on our own. First year I was at the company, we were in the red. Let's say by XX. Second year I was in the company, we were in the red, but only by X. Cut it in half. The next year, third year, we weren't in the red. We we're in the black. Now this year, we may be back in the red a little bit, maybe back in the black. It doesn't matter. I think it definitely does matter. I mean, there's obviously rumors going around that this company, American Pinball, is merely a tax write-off for Aimtron. But I like how David specifies that he feels like, even in his own mind, that that uh, Aimtron looks at American Pinball like their 20-year-old child that still lives at home. It's like, here's just some allowance, here's just some money, this should get you going, but we would really like it if you could build up and save up some money and go out and explore the world on your own and be your own person. Even he acknowledges that's more than likely what it is in this interview. So... That was intriguing for him to even say. And there's a couple of other notes that I wanted to put in here. And I think the main takeaway, and we can complain about how they're not going to be revealing or showing off their game at Expo, but I, I think the initial rumor was they weren't going to do it because they didn't want to be in between all these other bigger manufacturers and their game was just going to be kind of an afterthought. And my end result thoughting on that was that as long as your game is great, it doesn't matter what other games on the market. The, the main thing is you should just create a more intriguing, fun, entertaining game than your competitors. And I felt that them not doing this at Expo was a little bit like, okay, you're not very confident in what you're creating. But in this interview, he turns out he says, basically, the game's not ready yet. Okay, I can respect that. I mean, if that's your reason for not wanting to reveal and show off a game, it's because the game's not ready to reveal. We don't want to show off a game until we are 100% certain that the game is 100% ready to go, no issues, no problem, the code is really far along, if only another manufacturer would follow that suit, but I can respect that, American Pinball. If the game isn't ready, then don't show it to us. But when you do show it to us, Try to do it with a trailer that you had for Houdini and for your barbecue game. I know who did the trailers, so by all means, have him do it when you decide to release this game. It helps. So, Dutch Pinball. They have released information today. This is something I've been savvy about, but this is actually getting video footage and stuff like that from Stumbler themselves. Dutch has announced that, basically, for you modders out there, this game is going to be catering to you if you would like to add stuff or put things into the game to make it even better than it potentially already is. And if you would like to know more about this whole mod board that's going to be available to the public as well, but it's merely an announcement that the board is going to be coming stock inside of The Adventures of Alice in Wonderland. This board and everything is going to give you the ability to control, like, all kinds of things when it comes to lights and servo motors and stuff like that. If this is something that you're interested in doing and developing mods for any of your games out there, then by all means, I highly recommend looking into doing this for all the future games. For all you modders out there, keep doing what you're doing to improve these games, by all means. My hat, I salute you on that. Alright, so real quick, let's touch base on Turner Pinball. He has posted some official pictures showing off the pallets full of legs and the ramps and stuff like that. It's available on his Facebook page to basically give a lot of you out there that have put the money in that, hey, look, here's, here's parts. We're making games. It's certain things like this that help, I want to say, with those that have put money in for a deposit and stuff. They want to know for sure, like, hey, especially with historical reasons on this, that, hey, we're making the games, and so far it looks like definitely uh, Chris is going to be 
going all in. He wants these games to be built. I'm supposedly going to be visiting the facility maybe this month. That's still in the air at this point. We shall see. And speaking of visiting a facility, we've also got Barrels of Fun that will have a tour for those of you that are going to the Houston Arcade Expo. For information on that, I will put links in the video description down below as well. You have to purchase a ticket to the Houston Arcade Show in order to be eligible for the tour at Barrels of Fun. Now, Chicago Gaming Company is once again just silent. We don't really know what's going on with them at this point in time. Rumor is they will be making Medieval Madness remakes before the end of the year. So I'm kind of wondering what they're going to be doing at Chicago Expo. I mean, are they going to be bringing Pulp Fictions and a couple of their other remakes? Or are they going to be doing an announcement and showing off more of their, you know, Medieval Madness remakes? I don't know. It's yet to be seen. All I know is that they're very quiet, which is not out of the ordinary for them. So... We're going to have to wait and see what they're doing. Now, back to the Labyrinth on Barrels of Fun. I saw this posted on their Facebook page, and this just caught my eye, and I really wish that this individual would make many other pinball flyers like this. I think this would sell like hotcakes, especially at like expos and pinball festivals and stuff like that to have because i've got a flyer collection for every game that i own up here you can't see it but i've got every flyer for every game i know a lot of you out there collect the flyers and they probably have them hung up or whatever or in a drawer it doesn't matter the fact is i thought this was really cool to see and i would like it seen done to other flyers as well so there you go guys that wraps up all the bullet points that i have at this current point in time we have a new release this week for Jersey Jack. I will be busy the day of, but that night, hopefully I can do another live stream and we can go through the game and chat about what we think about it so far on just the videos and the visuals that they provide for us. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below on every point that I've got here or a certain one that really caught your interest. And until next time, guys, peace out.